the thoughts come, the desires come. Oh my God, what's going to happen? And then if you're just you're just being meditative, you're just looking, and then they disappear and they go, and then peace comes, and it becomes quiet again. Then maybe the next day there is a moment you watch something, you checked out something on Facebook, woo, something really strong comes and really makes you contract it. Again, just kind of observe it and then it just disappears. So it's really okay to just check out and go to that space of thoughtlessness as often as I want, really. Absolutely. I mean, okay. Absolutely, because... You know, rather than, I understand, I, I totally understand what you're saying because so many people on this path, they're like feel responsible that they need to be engaged with world events and, and, if, and they feel guilty if they're not engaged. But my suggestion is completely the opposite. The less engaged you are, the more peaceful your life becomes and the more it's flowing, the less I don't watch the news. I don't read stuff so much. I don't watch the conspiracy videos. Every once in a while, I just want to know what's going on. I may just go check something out. But the moment I go into it, I can just see like anxiety starts to happen or I get contracted, or my mind starts to get activated. Oh, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And <clears throat> for me, it's like nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. I mean, not, oh, that, yeah. not that nothing's gonna happen in the world. It's like nothing's gonna happen to me. What can happen to me? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can relate to that. I don't, I don't want, I haven't watched a single ever news line of this COVID. I haven't get, I don't get on Facebook. I'm not, I think that's my issue is that I'm so disconnected because I don't believe in giving it my attention that I feel like I'm still walking in this world of magic and miracles, but I can feel the different vibrations of the majority of the rest of the population. And yes. that's where it's two different planes of existence. And I just want to, I moved from Colorado here to make new friends, but I feel like everybody's programmed to believe this thing that isn't true. You know, that's why I'm so thankful just to speak to you guys because <clears throat> you seem to know a little bit more of God and the truth and that's all, you know? Right, I get it. <clears throat> I understand. So my <laughs> suggestion is you turn the poison into medicine. And if you use this opportunity for let's say a week, 10 days, and, and just be quiet, just be in the space and bring yourself back into the juice. And when you're quiet, you're still, expansion starts to happen and the presence starts to reveal itself. Her majesty, the supreme being, it starts to reveal itself. You start feeling the presence of God. And you start feeling the bliss. The bliss comes. The joy comes. And don't feel guilty. Awesome. Because, because this, this, your, it, it is the oneness but each and every one of us are on our individual path. So you've come to this point and obviously the source is leading you to awakening, leading you to self-realization. So you kind of have to make a decision like which one is your priority? Is your priority to come to full realization and recognize, find inner peace within yourself or is to deal with the world and world issues or whatever it is? Where, what's your objective? Inner you peace, know? hands down. <laughs> no contest. Okay. Then use, use the opportunity 
to discover inner peace. Imagine yourself being in, in a monastery or in a workshop, a situation that's really weird, like what is going on right now. And this situation, you're using it to dive within. So the other world, the other world is not entertaining. It's, it's boring, it's fearful, it's representing separation. So it's not really juicy to connect with it. Then use that as an excuse to dive in inside, to find the inner juice. Because when it's really yummy out there and it's fun and everything and you're connecting, so we're not focusing very much on the inner because it's outside. So I'm recommending like this week, just shift things. And let's see what happens next week when we meet again. Let's see if you feel something different or some discovery has taken place or not. Let's give it a try. We have nothing to lose. Perfect. And what you're saying is this is doing exactly what it's meant to do. If I'm shifting inward and finding places in nature to meditate and that's become my priority, then maybe this is all perfect. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for bringing it up. So we're going to do another meditation. And this other meditation is, let's just, and you don't have to agree with me or anything, but let's just, as if we're playing a game, okay? Make believe. Anybody played make believe when you were kids? Like, I don't know, you... When you're kids and you're creating games, you're playing. Whether you're playing with another group or with the other kids or whatever, you know, is the, our imaginations were making believe or whatever story, scenario we like. So why don't we just do this? I just want to show you something. And let's say, in this game we're playing, there is no you. And whatever you think, whatever you do, anything good you've done, anything bad you've done, anything constructive or destructive, all of your good habits with all of your addictions, maybe your dark addictions, okay? all of your sexual fantasies, all of your dark stuff, all of your good stuff in this game is God is living it. God is doing it. God is making you do these things. God is making you do the dark stuff. Because God or God is making you do kindness, helping other people, making donation, serving others, 